Hey everyone, Kavi here, and I just wanted to make a video on how to make a world model with its collision mesh for New Vegas. So just to be clear about what I'm talking about here, here we have the armor, baseball cap sunset, and it has a bipod model. Currently it's using a placeholder world model. And what a world model is, is when you drop this item in game, you're going to need a model, a 3D model in the game for it. And you're also going to need the collision data so that the hat or whatever in this case, the cap can collide with the world when you drop it or place it in the world. The bipod model is just the model that you see when you put it on your person. That model on your character has no physics because it's just tied to your head. But once it drops into the world, of course, it's going to need physics. So let's go ahead and get started. There are two NIF files, so two models that you're going to need here. The first is the biped model that we're starting with to make our world model with. And we also have a reference NIF. So this is just to make sure that everything is structured the way that it should be. So in this case, it's the Gambler Fedora 03 Go. And this is from the New Vegas Mesh Improvement Mod. So First step we're going to do is copy this reference file and then paste it. And we're going to rename this to BC Sunset, which is the name of our original NIF file or our biped NIF file. And we're going to go with underscore go, which is the naming convention for these world model NIF files. Next, we're going to open all of these. So currently, we have our original NIF file or biped NIF file. We have our final NIF file, what's going to be our final world model. And then we have our reference NIF file. So let's go ahead and put our reference on the left and our final NIF file on the right. And as you can see right now, they are identical, which is on purpose. And then we're going to put our original file also on the left. So first things first, let's minimize our original file and just confirm everything is the same, which it should be because we copied and pasted this. But we're going to get rid of this NI node because all the info in this NI node is currently pointing at the wrong thing. It's pointing at the gambler hat, which is our reference mesh. We don't need this right now. We don't need this in our final product. So we're going to remove this NI node. And now you can see all that we have left is the BS fade node and the BSX flags. And we already know that this is correct because we copied it from our reference mesh. But let's go ahead and just check that the flags are right. So in general, you're gonna want 66 to be here. And what that represents is we have bit one and bit six selected. So havoc and dynamic. This is generally what you're going to need for these world models. Okay, the next step is we're gonna to go to our original mesh. So in this case, that'd be BC sunset.nif. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this NI node, copy this branch, and just paste it into our final NIF file on the right. And we're going to paste it under this BS fade node. So now it's here. And as you can see, just like in the original mesh, it's offset a little bit. And you're going to see this with armors a lot. They're going to be offset from the center. That's all we needed our original mesh for. We can go ahead and minimize or close it. And now we're going to just be looking at our reference mesh and the final mesh. So as you can see, the structure of these two files is the same right now. But there are going to be some differences when we open this NI node. So let's go ahead and open the NI node. And you're going to see that we have this NI string extra data here. And this NI string extra data here does not line up. So we're going to delete this NI string extra data by hitting remove and then copy this one over and paste it under the NI node. Okay, so in general, what we're going to be doing is looking at the left side and making sure that our right side lines up. 
just like I said earlier. All right, so you might see that things are not in the right order. Don't worry, we'll fix that later. You also see that we don't have a collision object. We'll fix that later. And the NI tri ships, and it says NI tri strips on the left while we have a NI tri shape on the right. These two things are not exactly the same, but for our purposes, we can consider them interchangeable, so the same. In other applications, you might find differences, but for us, this should be okay to consider as the exact same thing. First things first, we're going to need that collision object. But before we do that, there's one important difference to note here, is that our hat on our reference mesh and the good mesh is in the middle, in the center, right, of these two lines. Whereas you can see that it's elevated a bit on the right. So the way we're going to fix that is we're going to go to this NI tri shape and we're going to translate it down using the Z axis. And 11 is usually a good start. Okay, so you can see that it's pretty much in the center now. And this will help us a bit later so that we don't have to modify the center of our collision mesh. All right, let's go ahead and make our collision object now. So to do that, we're in our final mesh here on the right. Let's right click here on this mesh. You can see it's selected in green and then go ahead and click Havoc and then click Create Convex Shape. And it's gonna give you this pop-up window so you can stick with 0.25, I think it's okay. I like to go a little bit larger, so 0.3. And then for collision radius, let's do 0.1. We wanna make sure this is 0.1. And then click OK. And then it's gonna create a hole, and you can see it has 13 vertices, which is pretty good, and 12 normals. If it has too many vertices, you might wanna increase that first value in the window, the pop-up window, so that the vertices goes down, but I think 13 vertices is okay. And if we open our, or if we click this button, show collision, this bouncy ball, you can see the yellow mesh, that is our collision mesh. So it's going to be convex, so it can't go in here basically, but it looks pretty much correct. So we're happy with it. All right, so the thing to do now is to make sure that the structure of everything is exactly parallel on the right and the left. So what we're going to do is look at our collision object here, and we're going to make sure that they are the same. So on the right here, it's pointing at the right target, has the right flags, which should be active. And then we have the body pointing to the rigid body. So that's good. Let's go ahead and expand on both sides. Okay, and we have the NI node on the left here. That's just the reference. And then we have the BHK rigid body. So on the left, you can see that the layer is FOL underscore clutter. Let's change that to the correct layer on the right in our final mesh. Looking at our reference mesh again, let's expand world object info. Everything is the same here. Okay, let's expand entity info. And you can see that unused 01 is not the same. So let's go ahead and change it. And this process contact callback delay, let's change it to be the same as well. And to be honest, I'm not too clear on what these are doing. We just want to make sure they're the same in our reference mesh and our final mesh. Same thing with the rigid body info. Let's go ahead and look at the process contact callback delay. You can see that it's not quite right on the right. So let's change that. Oh, oops. 35 here, 65535, five, five. and then translation, rotation, we don't need to worry about these. The main thing that we need to worry about is down here. One note I want to make is that, as you can see, our center is already correct. It's the green and red line here, and the blue, I guess, axes. So it's already in the center of the mesh. You want to make sure that's where it is. If it's not, then you can change the center here. But since we already translated our tri shape in the beginning, the center has already been set to be correct. So you got to make sure that these axes are in the middle of your mesh. If not, you're going to have some weird collision issues because the center of mass will be wrong. 
But since we already prevented that by translating our mesh, we're good here. So we can skip the center. Oh, oops, let's go back to wherever you were. So center's already good. Let's scroll down here. And we'll change the mass to be five, just to line up here, as well as the max linear velocity. But I just wanna let you know that these values are not too important. What we wanna make sure is that the motion system and all these four are the same. So here, let's go ahead and select the box inertia. And then for this, this should be deactivator spatial as it is on the left. And then solver deactivation should be low as it is on the left. And then mole qual fixed should be mole qual debris as it is on the left. As you can see now, everything is the same. And I want to make sure that you're not just blindly following my instructions here. If your reference mesh is different, for example, if it's a static object that doesn't get affected by physics, like a wall, for example, you want to make sure that you use a correct reference mesh so that the structure is re referencing the right things so that your final mesh is also referencing the right things. The values may be different depending on what collision mesh you're creating. So make sure that your reference mesh lines up with the mesh that you're creating a collision mesh for, if that makes any sense. Okay, so last thing we're gonna do is go to the convex vertices shape here. And you can see here that the material is stone on the right and it's cloth on the left. You wanna set this to whatever makes sense. In this case, cloth makes sense since it's a baseball cap. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and do one last thing and I want to point out a document which may be useful to you. It's bits of Nifscopery. You can find this on the Nexus. The main file that I think is really useful is this NIF troubleshooting one. And I like to do these three spells that it tells you for NIF crashing. These three are very useful to just run at the end to make sure everything is correct. And this document in general, has a lot of problems and solutions that you might run into pretty commonly when you are working with these NIF files, especially collision meshes. So it's a good reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to spells, sanitize, and then I'm going to click first collapse link arrays. Then I'm going to reorder the link arrays. Then last, I'm going to reorder the blocks. And yeah, that's pretty much it for our NIF file. I'm gonna go ahead and save here. And that's gonna tell me that, that's okay. Last thing we need to do before we test it in game is make sure that our item is actually using that world model. So we're gonna to go to the baseball cap sunset and then look. It's not, so we have to set it to the correct file path and file name. In that case, it's just sunset go, or bc sunset underscore go dot nif, and then hit okay. And we should be pretty much set. Let's just make sure our file structure is correct here. Yep, okay, let's go ahead and save. Okay, close this, and then we're going to launch New Vegas and test it in game. And as you can see here with this save, if your NIF file is set up incorrectly, it can crash when you drop the item, for example. It can also have some glitches with the collision. And there are a variety of problems that can occur. So make sure you do those last steps at the end there. All right, we're going to add the item to our inventory. So what is it called actually? Oh, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to give myself that item. And then I'm going to equip it in game. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. All right. And now is the moment of truth. We drop this item to make sure that the collisions work. And just the fact that the game has not crashed is a really good sign. And yeah, here's the item. It looks like in this case, they actually modeled the interior being empty 
or hollow, but a lot of collision meshes will not have that simply because that's how the original biped mesh was. But here, it's actually good. And you can see if we drop it, it behaves normally. There's no weird collisions. Let's roll it down this hill. And yeah, it looks to be pretty much centered. So no center of mass weird issues there. A lot of times what you'll have when the center of mass is off, like if we didn't translate it, is it will always land on its bottom. It will always land on its feet like a cat. As you can see here, we created a working world model and collision mesh for New Vegas. So yeah, go ahead and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. If you don't, I hope this video helped you and see you in the next one.